Hello everyone, this is Tina Gell with Crafty Maven Getaway, and this week we are doing a two-piece throwback. I'm a huge fan of Paige Evans. She just does some stunning, beautiful work, and I ran across this layout here that was from Scrap Your Stash, and so if you follow me, you know that I love to scrap my stash and use product old and mix it in with my new products. While I've done a lot of this where you cut out with your silhouette and you back it with paper and everything that she's so well known for, um, on this particular layout she was featuring ribbons and I thought oh my gosh I have tubs and tubs of ribbon. I've decided to do that and here is a look at our inspiration piece for this week and it's absolutely gorgeous and stunning. I'm kind of going a little bit more to the bright side. I'm using all of the colors, kind of a rainbow effect. I'm also pulling in the stars that are in this top picture here as well, or that is my plan. So the first thing I've done is I've went to my stash and I've pulled out different ribbons and I've went ahead and I have them here kind of laid out in rainbow color. So that's a look at my ribbons. Then I went to my silhouette and I made a cut file and I have this saying, I always say this about my son, that he is my sunshine and he makes me happy when skies are gray. And I found a little photo and so this is what I'm gonna work with and the first thing I'm gonna do is cut some ribbons and start backing them. I've taken my ATG and I'm just gonna run tape along the top and the bottom of all of the word cutouts and then I'm gonna go and turn it and put just a little bit in between. I'm hoping that the top and the bottom will be enough to catch the ribbon and we'll be able to keep it all down. I do in the end go back and have to pick up a few pieces and put some more adhesive underneath to get it all in, but this, this is a great start. It's more than enough adhesive and the ATG makes it really quick and, and not messy like a liquid glue. So I laid out my ribbons. I've cut them just a little bit over an inch maybe. So this really does not take much ribbon at all. So it's really not a great stash buster, I guess, in some ways because you just use such a minute amount. But it is a great way to be using all of this ribbon that I have that I really thought, oh, I just need to pass on. But So it felt good to, to pull it out and to, to really use it. So I've laid them out, like I said, in rainbow color. I knew I wanted the word gray in my gray ribbons and I actually only had two different ones so I repeated it and then started with my blue and then here you see I fast forwarded and I've gotten all of my ribbons down and this is where I'm just kind of lifting up some and putting just a little bit of extra adhesive down there. I tried to keep the yellow on the word sunshine as well so that was another little thought process that I had and other than that I just went from the brighter pinks to a pastel pink to kind of a coral orangey yellow and then I did keep a little bit of the green in even though it's not really a part of the um, inspiration piece it's just I mean like one or two ribbons and then it kind of went into the teals and the blues. The next thing I'm doing is I don't have a lot of the primary colors in mist and so I took my watercolor palette out and a paintbrush and I'm just thinning it down a lot and just flicking it off the brush. Now when I started I had a smaller paintbrush so I was getting these little bitty flecks and it was taking forever and so you'll see me here in a minute I'll pick up my package of brushes and I go to get a little bit bigger brush tip so that I can get some bigger dots. Just like in Paige's example, I'm just using the same colors of the ribbons in the background and so I'm putting the pinks behind the top part of the layout around the pink letters and then some yellow around the yellow and green around the green and, and so on. And that just helps fill up all of that extra white space on the background and emphasizes those colors just a little bit more. And you'll see like right here, I still wanted a little bit bigger drops and so I actually just touched the brush down. And here's all of the little splatters on there. And now I've decided I want a little bit of something behind the photo. I believe in the in Paige's example, she did have um, a couple of little, uh, probably the same thing, a three by four card or something um, tucked in behind there. And I had this one that had kind of the rainbow color stripes. So I thought that was perfect to kind of go along with the background that I created with all of the ribbons, but yet I wanted something a little bit more solid in between there. So then I found this one cut apart that was in the aqua kind of minty green color. 
So I'm going to cut that in half and back my photo with those two cards. And then I did the same thing as the example. I took just my scrap bin and I pulled out colors that I had used in the layout. I picked almost all of my border punches that I had and punched a border on them. And now I'm just going through and I'm cutting some shorter and some longer and putting one on each side of the photo. And I'm just gonna stack those up. So right now I'm just kind of getting the links and then I will arrange them um, how I want them and I'll actually change that up towards the end as well and I cut a couple of extra I have yellow here and I also had some gray because those were some of the colors that I had used but I end up pulling those out I didn't really like them in there it was just kind of too much I wanted to keep more to the aqua and the blue green and the pink and then I have that brighter pink and then this trim here is just some trim that I had with my ribbon and it was so pretty and dainty and I don't know, I just fell in love with it. So I thought it would be really nice to, to border the photo as well because it kind of tones down those other colors so that my title and my picture still stays the primary focus. Otherwise, all of those little strips because of all the extra texture and some of the colors are a little bit brighter and there's more of it than just the small color peeking out behind the photos, it could have easily taken away from the rest of the design and it's really the supporting element. Um, and then also towards the very end, you will notice these bright pink, the chain looking punches. I have those on top, but it was really distracting. And at the very end, I will take those and tuck it up partly underneath that lace trim so that it kind of mutes it, but yet you can really see it and it bounces off from that word at the very top. And But it tones it down just enough that it's not too vibrant. So I do have to apologize this video. I did kind of splice it and delete a lot because it was a lot of busy work. This layout actually took um, at least an hour and a half, maybe closer to two hours of actually putting it together. Of course, I did have some interruptions. Um, my guys were home and cooking dinner and all of that, so I did stop and start a few times, but it's still, um, the actual filming time was almost two hours. So I definitely had to delete out. I also had issues um, at one point in the beginning I had ran out of space and I had to go and delete some video so that I could continue filming and so I missed a little bit there and then at the end my battery died and so I missed the very very end but I will be sure to um, put the still shots in and point out the things that I did to finish. So now I have all of that decided where I wanted and I'm just going to adhere it down. And I'll tell you a little bit about this photo. This is my son when he was about a year old. And he has always been my happy little child. And I've always called him my little sunshine. And um, he just was always happy, always on the go. And so any time that he actually wore himself out enough that he would fall asleep was just a glorious moment in my mind. And so this was one of those days that he had just played so hard and he was in his bed. He had all kinds of stuffed animals. He had his books that he would sit because he's always been an avid reader. So he had his books piled up. He has a bucket on his head. I don't know if you can quite see that in the video, but he, he had been playing with a bucket. He loved like my utensils and buckets and bowls and things out of the cabinet. So I guess he had some of that in his bed, but he ended up having the bucket on his head. And I'm sure he was playing something where it was a hat or you know, something that he was reading, and he had just given up and fallen asleep, and so I had snapped this photo, so I just think it's really sweet, and it wasn't really, you know, other than the story of what I've just told you, there's nothing particular about this photo itself, you know, a story to tell about the photo, it's just a story about him. So this was a perfect little layout so that I could really focus on techniques and you know this large title and all of that that still put my simple little story into his album. So I have loved doing the layout. So what I've done now, I just took some brads and different things and punched in the holes of the words and that was something that Paige had done as well. And then I wanted to incorporate the stars on the inspiration piece. So I had a lot of enamel shapes that were the stars 
And I took the same thing as the splatters and I just used those color of stars around those words. And that helped me where I didn't get the big splatters that I kind of wanted, you know, just a few. Then those stars took that place of that. So I was really happy with that. I actually like that better than big splatters because I'm, I like splattering, but I'm not a real messy, messy kind of person. So, but I love my enamel dots. So I'm just putting those around and then I had some different sizes and I picked up the real tiny ones just to fill in the gaps. I always start big and then just work down to my smaller embellishments. One of the last things I'm going to do is create some embellishment clusters on top of these punched border strips. So I had some pieces from the Fancy Pants Happy Place and it was this origami bird and I thought that was really cute. It had a lot of the colors that I'm using in the layout and it was just kind of playful and so I'm going to pop dot that up. And then I also have some old sticker sheets from October afternoon and I just found a couple of pieces um, I have a couple of feathers that I'm going to tuck in, and mainly I was just looking at the color of items that I could add. I also had these two gray stars that I had uh, cut out that were just in part of my little stash where I keep leftovers. And so I put a couple of those on there at an angle, and I pop dotted those up as well, or the top one, this one here on the right, I pop dotted it. The one on the left is just kind of tucked up underneath that punched border. I have this little thing that says it happened and I thought that was kind of funny because that's kind of how I always felt when he took a nap when he fell asleep. It's like, yes, he's asleep. Um, so I'm going to work that in. I kind of move it around a couple of different places, but it's going to end up underneath that star. I had a little label that I was trying to fit in over here so that I could uh, stamp the date on. And I move it around a little bit, but it ends up not making the layout. I liked the color that the the longness of the label which I could have trimmed it down and all of that but um, at this point I was getting tired it, like I really needed to just wrap this layout up it's very intensive um, so I ended up just scratching it but I took some of the puffy stickers from that same uh, happy place collection and so I'm going to add a little teal colored puffy arrow underneath the star and that black label be sure to check out the rest of the Crafty Mavens and their take on the two piece throwback this week. Here's a look at the finished layout. You can see that puffy sticker, the arrow. I also added just some flat arrow stickers onto the title and um, that's going to wrap it up. So thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my work, you can check me out at Tigger's Teach It on YouTube. All of the links will be down below. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.